Hello, I'm Jared Oxander. And I'm Robert Arguez. And welcome to Kaijudo 24 7. Uh, you're going to be watching our set review of Shattered Alliances, uh, the nature of civilization. We'll be rating the scales uh, with value and a playability with a scale of 0 to 5. 0 being the least playable card you put in a box, forget about it. 5 being the most playable card where if you're going to plan on building every deck, you're going to need to have access to these or need to have them yourself. Yep. And the first card we're looking at is a super rare, uh, Dawn Giant. It's a Colossus, 7 drop, 6k, uh, double breaker, and it has the ability Upheave. Whenever this creature attacks, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a creature card, this creature gets plus 6,000 power and triple breaker until the end of the turn. Put the revealed card on the bottom of your deck. Um, on the value side, we put it at about 4 bucks. The playability side, about 1.5. Not too playable, but you'll randomly get the triple breaker ability off and do some work. Yeah, and a mid-range list playing green and kind of creature heavy, pretty decent. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not too much there. Yep. Uh, moving on, we have Headstrong Wanderer, uh, 3 drop, 3,000, Beastkin, with the ability Tribal Matriarch. Whenever this creature attacks, each of your other Beastkin gets plus 2,000 power until the end of the turn. Uh, value side, nil. Not much there, just whatever a basic common's worth. And a playability of 1.5. Randomly, Beastkin, <coughs> Tribal, there might be a little something there. Yeah, the, uh, Saber Bolt. Um, I, I, people are were calling it still a deck. I, I don't know that it was performing so well in the last meta. Uh, maybe there's an innovation that could have happened, but um, this card, I think it outclasses another 3-drop uh, Beastkin that we've had. And, it, I mean, you could pr play this turn 3 and then turn 4 Evil it with the Saber 2, Bronze Arm, Saber 2. So, uh, not the Bronze Arm. Was it Bronze Arm? Uh, whatever the evil is, I'm I'm happy. <laughs> um, so so there there's your playability 1.5 for three for three k uh, potential lord buff on your other beast king. Um, next up we have uh, Jarbala Keeper. It's a four drop four k vanilla, meaning it has no abilities. Uh, value side, not much there. Playability of one, just yeah. a vanilla creature. Yeah, I, I got the playability one because it's a beast king. Yep. Moving on. Uh, <clears throat> Monsterfy, a level two spell. Choose one of your creatures, it gets plus 4,000 power until the end of your turn. Value side, not much there. Whatever a basic common's worth and a playability of zero. I, I could argue 0.5 because you could play it in a, a deck playing Starseed Squadron. Okay. But. But aside from that. <laughs> you'd almost rather be playing something and tap something down. Right? Correct. <clears throat> so, yeah, the, these are these kind of spells are better in Magic because they're, they're considered combat tricks because you can do them in the middle of combat. Or but, instant speed, which means at any point. Yeah, um, but in Kaijudo, like, you'd have to cast it on your turn, and maybe you could, like, you get them and you kill one of the creatures that swung into you the turn previous, and it's as good as a removal spell, but... But aside from that, not too much there. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> next up, we have Ninja Pumpkin, uh, Wild Veggie, uh, five, level 5, with 5,000 power, and the ability hack o lantern I never actually read the ability name, hack o lantern um, While this creature is tapped, each time one of your opponent's creatures attacks, it attacks this creature if able. So, I'm a pretty big fan of this card. I'd put an initial value around $10 and a playability of 4 uh, Against the mono light or any aggro deck, if you have this guy tapped and they don't have a creature that's bigger than 5,000, they do not get through. They have to have removal or a creature that's 5,000 or bigger. So this can put a lot of aggressive decks in a really, really tough spot. Um, aside from that... I, I think I think it actually fits really well in uh, something with white. The ability to just tap down one of their dudes, swing another dude with this guy, and now all of their dudes have to attack this guy. It's very strong. It could set you very far ahead against any of the aggressive lists. Yeah, I think that, sure. that's why we place it at such a strong value, because we do see Rush being a very strong archetype in this next meta. So. Very true. <clears throat> Uh, next up, we have Striding Hearthwood, uh, level 6, 7,000, creature, uh, Treekin, it double breaks, and it has Root Stomp. Whenever this creature wins a battle, uh, and the losing creature would be banished, that creature is put into its owner's mana zone instead. Um, playability, <coughs> zero, and a value of a buck, because it's a rare. Okay. I don't want to put a creature I kill into my opponent's mana zone. Yeah, I, I think I, initially I was 100% agreeing, because like, ramp, mana ramping your opponent... Uh, especially when you're not progressing your board state and not hitting one of their shields, it's really, really rough. But I will say that if there are, if they have a Gregorius Fortress in play, this is pretty decent because yeah. it it'll make you not have to. But then their Fortress just swings into your Hearthwood, and 
Yeah, so it's a, maybe a point two. <laughs> yeah, but not much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, we have Transforming Totem, uh, level five Spirit Totem with power three thousand. First ability, Vitalize. When this creature enters a battle zone, you may put a card from your hand in your mana zone, and mana infused. If this creature would be banished, put it in your mana zone instead. Uh, Initial value, no, not much there. Whatever basic uncommon is, and a playability of one. It has the ramp ability, and it goes to your mana zone, so it has two positive triggers that help you out. Yeah. So that's why we'd give it a one. A, a lot of my team wanted to argue a playability of like zero, but I because you'd rather play ma uh, mana storm. But I think with a lot of mid-range lists coming into the forefront, if you're playing more mid-range and you have this guy on your list, you're not going to be using him to like ramp to eight or nine. You're going to want him in play. You're going to want that body to be able to swing. And if they counter swing into it, then you're going to get a mana. And if they don't, then you're going to get another shield. Uh, it's I, so I think there's value all, there. There's some little bit of value. It has two positive abilities, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. makes it automatically not possible to be a zero in my book. Right, right. Um, next card, uh, level four shield blast spell, wild growth. Put up to two cards from your hand into your mana zone. Uh, <coughs> value of zero, playability of zero. You're going to eat your whole hand away by casting this card turn four. And I like having cards in my hand. Usually a good thing. It usually gives you more options. More options usually equals more wins. Yeah. Uh, if you want to get into some really heavy theory, you can talk about you know, resources. And in Kaijudo, your resources are your shield and your hand. Um, and your detriment in your hand resource to get more mana to make your top deck. Yeah, I'd just, just rather play Reap and so yeah, or is. Mana Storm. This is just a very bad card. <laughs> um, we, what do we call it? We call those uh, skill checkers. <laughs> skill checkers in Magic. Yep, yep. <laughs> so if you're uh, quote-unquote not very good at this game, then you'll probably play Wild Growth. And if you're quote-unquote good at this game, you'll, you probably won't play this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then our super rare from Nature... Um, is Wild Strider Ram Ramnoth. <laughs> uh, he's a Primal Champion. Level 6, 6,000. Double Breaker, with the ability Abundant Growth. At the start of each of your turns, you may put the top card of your deck into your mana zone. Uh, we put a value at 12 bucks and a playability 3. This is a very solid, good, efficient card. Uh, nothing bad about it. Yep. It's just I, overall okay. Yeah, it's possible to um, reap and sow and then get this guy turn 5 and then turn 6 here at potentially 8 mana uh, just because he triggers automatically at the start of your turn. Um, he does double break so he can be a finisher in like a mid-rangey type of list. Um, he trades with Lyros. He's overall yeah, right. just a good card. Yeah. Not, <clears throat> not amazing, not stellar. Just a good card. I'd recommend picking him up because they're going to be okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if you give him the value of playability. I must have missed that, but a value of 12, playability of 3. Uh, that was our review of Nature Civilization from the, upcom uh, from the upcoming set, Shattered Alliances. Uh, if you agree with our values and playability ratings, 0 to 5, uh, let us know in the comments below. Um, if not, let us know too. Uh, if you're in the playlist, go ahead and keep going. If you're not in the playlist and you just kind of want to watch this and you want to be done for the day, then you're done. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Jared Oxator. And I'm Robert Arguez. And we'll see you later.